We have seen many events happen in 2013. Some good moments, some embarrassing moments, some that are controversial, and more. Movies are not so different during that year. There are those that people praised as the ones to be forever remembered, and the ones that people raged over just for its existence. When it comes to animated films, however, people might remember 2013 as one of the worst years for animation. Seriously, most of the good ones are considered just okay, while the bad ones ended up being really bad. This year alone, I had to give out not one, not two, not three, but five Animat Seals of garbage! That's more than twice that I've given out since I've created the seal two years ago! So this year, the worst list will definitely show the worst of the worst. I'm Animat, and this is the top five best and worst animated films of 2013. <laughs> Number 5 Best Monsters University People nowadays are used to expecting great things from Pixar, and with MU, they managed to make a nice prequel to one of their first films. Monsters University is a fine example of what Pixar is capable of with both their creativity and animation, giving out something that's very colorful and many different fantastic designs, rather it be the monsters themselves or the architecture around the university. And like I said before, it's a prequel that connects itself very well to Monsters, Inc. Fans of the first film were delighted to see the many different cameos and answering a lot of questions they had regarding this world of monsters, not to mention giving out an awesome and pretty intense third act. However, as good as it sounds, it's definitely not Pixar's best. In fact, far from it. Yes, the last part is great, but the first hour of the film was just dull and predictable, the characters take a long time to be likable, and it often has a lot of missed opportunities, especially with Randall. I wouldn't say it's as good as Brave, but then again, I'd take this over the Cars movies any day. With Monsters University, going back to school never looked this good. Or even ever. Oh Number 4 Best The Crudes This is from the same mind that brought us Lilo and Stitch and How to Train Your Dragon, and with how this ended up becoming, it really shows. The Crudes might be the most surprising animated feature this year just by how fun and heartfelt it is to watch. What I never expected to find is that the characters are very likable and well developed, rather it be Eep, Grug, or even Guy, where the people can easily find themselves rooting for them on their journey. Not to mention that the animation is just beautiful. From the large environments that gives us amazing views, to the creative design of the animals, to the eccentric animation on the characters. It's a fine example of what Chris Sanders and his team is capable of. But with that said, there are a few things where Chris has to definitely work on. Like his writing. In here, it's just terrible. The story is unoriginally predictable, utilizing the most overused plot elements, while the characters themselves feel like they're copies of other works. Plus the fact that the jokes do feel more juvenile, feeling like the movie is geared more for kids than anyone else. The Croods may be a bit unoriginal, but it's what it did on its own that's worth remembering. Number 3 Best Epic This could possibly be one of the most underrated films of 2013. Epic can be best described as the spiritual successor to DreamWorks Rise of the Guardians. Not just because of William Joyce's involvement, but also because it gives out the same feeling of wonder. I think it goes without saying that this could be the best animation made by Blue Sky yet. 
it introduces us to this whole new world deep within the forest that has tons of magic, beautifully looking characters, very nice details, and gives our world a completely different point of view that literally makes the ordinary look extraordinary. But as much as I applaud them on the animation, I can see why this has fallen a bit into obscurity. Since it is mostly set in the forest, Epic seems to blend in with all the other environmental films like Ferngully or Avatar to the point where even the story is kind of similar. That and some of the characters aren't that appealing to begin with. There are some that are great like Ronin, Mandrake, and Mub and Grub, but the main characters like MK and Nod aren't really likable and some like Queen Terra and Bufo are just there to get the celebrity's name on their ads. It could have done more to stand out from the others, but then again, it's better to have something epic than another Ice Age sequel. Number 2 Best Despicable Me 2 this actually ended up becoming the second highest grossing film of 2013, right under Iron Man 3, and those who have seen it know exactly why. Despicable Me 2 is a great successor to the first film, sharing the humor, the action, and the heartfelt charm that people know and love. The humor, of course, comes from the very clever and witty writing along with the minions. The action comes from the new spy angle and all the crazy gadgets, and the charm is from Gru's search to find love. Not for himself, but also for the girls to have a mom. What the movie does is that it mixes all these elements perfectly where one doesn't overshadow the other, and they all connect together seamlessly. Plus the fact that even as a movie in itself, it's greatly done in terms of both writing and animation. There are a few flaws, sure, like the girls aren't as important than they were in the first film and Lucy can get annoying at times, but even at that, they can just be considered nitpicking and it doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the film at all. With the way that the Despicable Me films are going, I really can't wait to see what they have in store in the Minions movie. And the number one best animated film of 2013 is... Frozen. I remember during the time before its release, everyone had doubts over this film, thinking that this'll be just tangled on ice. The result, however, completely blew everyone's expectations away. Frozen is an instant Disney classic that hits all the right notes so that it'll be remembered for years to come. The story is written so well by giving something familiar with the Disney formula, but executed in a way that makes it look completely new. The animation is breathtaking, with great use of effects and designs like Elsa's Ice Palace and the Kingdom of Arendelle. The characters are lovable, from the powerful but frightened Elsa, to the high-spirited Anna, to the snarky yet charming Kristoff, to the naive Olaf. The songs are just unforgettable, with a more Broadway tone that's uplifting, fun, and often pretty deep. In recent years, a lot of people are arguing if Disney's entering a new era with their animated films. If Frozen isn't proof enough to say that Disney's back, then I don't know what the fridge can. I wouldn't say that this is a second renaissance, but this is definitely a new age for Walt Disney Animation Studios, where their films even overshadow the ones made by Pixar, and that's really saying a lot. I mean, as I'm recording this, Disney is actually thinking of putting this on Broadway, and even I know that this is something that can easily work. Frozen, the number one greatest animated film of 2013. The cold never bothered me anyway. Now before we move on to what could possibly be the worst worst list of the decade, let's take a look at the honorable mention. Turbo. I don't think there's anywhere for DreamWorks to hide the fact that with this film, they just want to make their own version of Cars. Imagine if you take the entire concept of the Pixar movie 
add the plot of Ratatouille and replace some characters with snails, then you essentially get Turbo. Now, I'm not saying that all of it is pretty bad. What it did with the animation is well made, giving both the point of view of the people and the snails, along with some good racing scenes. That, and some say despite the bad writing, you have to be on the right mindset in order to enjoy it. Sure, it's dumb, but it's enjoyably dumb. Yeah, well, I'd love to, but I can't, because of how obvious of a cash grabber it wants to be. It shows that the people at DreamWorks want to replace Lightning McQueen with Theo, along with the comparisons to this and Cars. That and the many different ads for Verizon don't help either. This is easily the kind of film that would have a nice spot on my worst list, but after what I've been through in 2013, it could have been much worse. Just consider Turbo lucky that this snail is fast enough to get itself here. Number 5 Worst Free Birds How is this for a movie? Time-traveling turkeys trying to take themselves off the Thanksgiving menu. Does that sound embarrassingly stupid? Well, that's because it is. Free Birds is just a dumb movie, suffering from bad writing where it doesn't know what to do with the story, mediocre-looking animation, and one of the worst endings ever thought of. Now, this may sound a bit crazy, but not only I could see where it's trying to go with it, but I could also see how it would have been a great comedy. I'll admit, some of the humor is pretty good, and it would sometimes play with the ridiculous premise. That, and the characters themselves are well developed. It could have really been something, but what's holding them back is just the terrible execution of it all. Let's just be thankful that we won't be seeing more adventures with Reggie and Jake anytime soon. Number 4 Worst Planes 2013 was the year that Disney was both praised for their efforts and also humiliated for their dumb decisions. And the biggest one for the latter would be to bring this could have been directed DVD film into theaters. Planes is just a huge mess. The story is completely disorganized by rushing to the big race without knowing anybody thus giving out one-dimensional and generic characters. Not to mention that some like to play around the stereotype zone. Although, I can't really say the same about the animation. For what it's worth, it's pretty decent. The animators could have done more with it, but it looks like it could fit well into the world of Cars. I know this is not Pixar quality, I mean, this is from Disney Toon Studios, the same people who also made the Tinkerbell movies. But this could also explain why Planes is as bad as it is. Because before Tinkerbell, Disney Toon was responsible for almost all those dumb Disney sequels. And that's exactly what this movie feels like. A poorly executed and unnecessary film that's trying to profit from being related to a popular Disney movie. The only thing that Planes succeeded in doing is to make the audience ask for something better even if it means to bring back Mater. Number 3 Worst Walking with Dinosaurs Out of all the animated films of 2013, this could have been a real winner. It was actually almost there since it had some of the best animation of the year with some of the most realistic dinosaurs ever put on film. Not to mention the gloriously filmed backgrounds and a pretty noble and touching story about the life of one dinosaur named Patchy. So with all that said, why is this on the worst list? Three or maybe four words. Last minute voiceovers. You'd think that such a small added thing wouldn't hurt the movie much, right? Not the way this movie did it. Literally only four people managed to find a way to fill the entire movie with 98% annoying dialogue. And when I say four people, 
I meant that there are only four characters that cover the movie with poop jokes, bad puns, and useless talking. It's so obvious that it's such a last minute executive decision when their lips don't even move to what they say and how some of the scenes were badly edited to make it look more kid friendly. The good qualities of the movie that I mentioned earlier are there, but the audience is having such a hard time to focus on the good parts when they're too busy praying for those stupid voiceovers to just end. I'm really hoping that the BBC will one day release a special edition of this movie where they take out all the bad dialogue so that we can enjoy what the film is meant to be. I think I like to call it Walking with Dinosaurs. The Shut Up Edition! Number 2 Worst Escape from Planet Earth this movie is literally nothing but trouble since the very beginning of production. After going through, I kid you not, 17 rewrites and a big lawsuit, the end result is possibly one of the most dull and generic animated features ever put on film. I think by the 12th rewrite, they just gave up and the story is just as plain and basic as it can get while the characters are either not worth caring or just a bunch of idiots. As for the animation, it's decent, I can see where it can be good, but the designs like the story are completely generic and would look more suitable in a children's show. At this point, I don't even know why the Weinstein company ever bothered to be in charge of animated films when they don't even know what they're doing in the first place. They got that one lucky shot with Hoodwinked, but then the rest just went all the way downhill, and it would get worse and worse. Maybe Escape from Planet Earth is an appropriate title for this film, because with bad movies like these, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. And the number one worst animated film of 2013 is... Cloudy, with a chance of meatballs too. Unlike Escape from Planet Earth, where the crew decided to just not try anymore, I'm sure that the people at Sony Pictures Animation tried with this film. But it's to make the worst animated feature ever put in theaters. And my god were they successful with their goal. I will give it this. The food animals were highly creative in terms of design, and the movie is very colorful. But it doesn't really matter when everything else in the film is executed in the most horrible way possible. The story is literally a retelling of the first Cloudy film, but making it even more ridiculous and adding a preachy environmental message to save the animals. A cast where if you're not Flint or Chester V, then you're completely useless and say the most painful jokes, and some of the worst character design and character animation ever displayed in movie history. It's films like Cloudy 2 the reason why people don't take animation seriously, and consider it more a genre rather than a medium to make movies. Anyone involved with the production should seriously be ashamed of themselves and maybe even reconsider their life decisions because this is a symbol of everything wrong with animated films and a disgrace to the animation industry. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2, the number one worst animated film of 2013. And that's all I've got for the top 5 best and worst animated films of 2013. Thank freaking god that this year is done. Hopefully, things can only pick up from here for 2014. Blah, maybe. Must watch. Now having serious doubts. Okay, now it's being released. This should be good. Another one already? This looks great. I'm not sure. Who's making it? Disney? It'll be good. And what the fridge is this? See you later, dudes. <laughs>